I'm really glad and happy that uh, I have Johannes Reck here, the CEO of Get Your Guide, one of the most promising unicorns from Berlin. With Get Your Guide, people worldwide can book activities, tours, and experiences anywhere where they are. You're already working on this for 10 years, which is amazing. Like uh, one of the, it's basically your first job, right? It's my first job, yeah, essentially. Fantastic. So uh, the, the company is headquartered here in Berlin. It's more than 500 employees already working for Get Your Guide with offices worldwide. So truly an international company. And that's also fitting the topic that we will be discussing uh, later today. But one thing that I have to mention now is that uh, Johannes has just recently raised one of the biggest rounds here in Berlin, one of the biggest rounds here in Germany, and one of the biggest rounds in travel tech in Europe. A $484 million Series E, definitely something outstanding. Today's topic is all about how to grow and scale fast and when it's the right time to actually kick in the growth engine to grow faster and maybe even when is the right time to step back a little bit from the growth engine. Um, we will talk about the roles of product and marketing on the growth side and also discuss about the people that you need in order to scale your organization by doing that. So. To kick it off, the first question, Johannes, is maybe you can share with us from your experience and from your point of view, how do you see growth and what is growth? I think actually growth uh, is one of the really misunderstood metrics in, in the startup e ecosystem. Growth obviously is the number one metric that all investors and you know stakeholders, employees, etc., look for. And you know very often you mean user growth and you know net revenue growth and all of that. But to me, when I look at a company, uh, including a travel company like Get Your Guide that isn't used every day, um, I think the much more important metric is actually customer satisfaction and retention. So that's really like the key metric that you should be looking for. And I think as we're talking about scaling and growth. Uh, the key thing that you need to figure out first is actually, is that product that I built something that sticks, right? Is it something that consumers need where you have a product market fit and where people actually come back to? And, you know, you can do that on consistently good unit economics. Unit economics for everyone who's not a VC basically means that, you know, over time as people come back to my product is the cost that I need to, um, that I need to, to sort of like incur as, a, uh, a, as an organization for that customer is that actually smaller than the lifetime value of that customer, what's the margin between the two? With 10 years of history, 14 offices around the world, more than 500 employees, I can imagine that you have been going through different phases of growth as well. And something that we have seen in, in some business models um, is that the entire focus on growth sometimes is very dangerous to a startup. So you have to evaluate very, very reasonably where to grow and where maybe even to grow a little bit slower in order to actually not overexpose the organization. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and your journey over the last 10 years and how you've seen that happening and evolving. You know, at Get Your Guide, we've always been like really lucky that, you know, our timing was just impeccable uh, in, in, a, in a number of dimensions. So we actually started with our, our original prototype, you know, hold your breath in 2008, which was a peer-to-peer -to -peer tour guiding platform where students around the world could sign up to be tour guides. Um, that platform um, you know, aggregated a total of 200 students worldwide over the course of, I think, 18 months. And you know, because students are never available, they typically have to do classes and courses, et cetera. Um, you know, we only got to, um, I think, four bookings in the first 18 months, three of which was my mother because she took pity on the, the project. And, and so like, we failed big times in you know, our first iteration, which was a fantastic sandbox for us to understand you know, product market fit and you know, what you need to do actually to do something that um, you know, actually appeals to customers. And only the second time around in 2000, end of 2009, beginning of 2010, when we launched Get Your Guide as the global marketplace for travel experiences, so you know, a place where people can book attraction tickets, sightseeing tours, excursions, day trips, etc., uh, we actually were successful. Why is that so important? Um, because it actually gave us time to experiment and research and I think that's just like something that's so important before you scale that you don't just go out and just blow your money on something that you know doesn't work and that's a mistake that I see with a lot of startups they're too concerned with like venture funding and you know growing instead of like you know product market fit so is that what I sell really something that consumers want and that they can come back to uh, at, you know so like frequently and um, you know that they want to purchase time and again and we have good customer service uh, and customer satisfaction scores 
And the second, um, you know, t a thing on timing where we got lucky is, you know, it took us four or five years until we really scaled into the venture zone, right? So we really built this business, uh, you know, with a great degree of consideration across all of the different parts of the organization, whether that's engineering and the code base, or whether that is customer service, or whether that is supply operations, or whether that is marketing. We were very, very much in control before we pured on the fuel. And it, it's like if you'd asked me if you would have given us 20 million dollars let's say uh, so a large amount of money in 2010 when we started we would have probably failed and which sounds completely crazy but probably we would have done the wrong, wrong things but because we were so constrained we constantly needed to iterate and, and innovate um, you know at much greater velocity and, and on a shoestring so with very little budget and that you know actually led us then to find the right growth model for the company that was investable much later but am I right to assume that at that point where you decided to take on institutional funding that growth became a more important decision to make for you guys Yes, it became uh, the core thing for sure. And it be became much, much more of a focus because the moment we came into, um, you know, you might call it the pattern or, you know, if, if, if you mean you would call it the treadmill of, of, you know, having to deliver us of like no growth and revenue and, 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 and you know, so like ultimately profits according to, to the business plan, right? Uh, you know, you, you had a very clear path that you needed to walk and there was a very clear execution line. And, um, you know, from there on, um, you know, and that's very typical in the venture world, right? You know, you start to like, um, you know, put fuel onto the fire and you go, to, you know, from X to Y and then the question is, okay, do we break even and, and so, like no go for profits and then an exit or do we actually take on the next round and then so like you no know, so like you no know, grow even further um for us the key reason to take the money and to walk on all of that uh in a select like venture and, and growth path was actually uh, relatively simple we realized very early on that what we are selling with get your guide is not only a, pro a product that's applicable for german customers or berlin customers but you know sightseeing experience is something that people around the world Uh, you know, need. And the second thing that we realized is that it's a winner takes all, if not most, marketplace. So if Get Your Guide is not the one global brand, then there will be another global brand that will be global, and then Get Your Guide by definition will be small and will be ultimately destroyed. Uh, because, you know, people from Germany will go and purchase tickets, you know, at the Madame Tussauds in London or at the Empire State Building or will want to go and see Alcatraz. And for American consumers, it's the same thing. So ultimately, the marketplace with the greatest purchasing power similar to Amazon or similar to booking.com or Airbnb and vacation rentals will prevail so for us after a lot of consideration it was the right path to raise a lot of money because we knew if we don't do it someone else will ultimately do it and then we will fail in the long term I mean that's an interesting one about these kind of marketplaces right because you have to try to eat up as much on the supply and demand side as possible and power grab and land grab as much as you can we could already tell that at increasing scale Uh, the unit economics, the repeat patterns, the product quality on both the demand and the supply side were just getting better every single year. So Get Your Guide's metrics have gotten better every single year absolutely consistently over the last 10 years, right? So like our worst unit economics repeat etc year was in 2010 and it's really gotten so like better every year after that and that's just the power of scale at the same point in time that's not true for every business right a lot of businesses don't scale in that same way so if you even look at a hyper successful business like uber just because you're very big as uber in new york doesn't mean you're very big and successful in berlin right a and then you know you have to be really careful in terms of under like you know raising the right amount of capital because otherwise you get into the spiral where you raise more and raise more and raise more and maybe you don't have the global network effects and maybe you ultimately get burned because you get spread too thin and one could actually look at an uber today and be like you know it's a, obviously you know i don't want to criticize anything it's the 70 80 billion dollar market cap but maybe it would have actually been smarter not to spend so much money on so like you know china and asia and consolidate the us early right and have like one winning territory so growth you know y you can be very very successful and still fail in your strategy right so this is a little bit the problem with with growth what is your experience with like launching these new offices and new markets because w one of the things that we have seen in many com companies is that this rocket approach of blueprinting an internationalization strategy and do the same thing in japan south Af south africa and the us doesn't work so you have to be careful and understand local markets how did you approach that so part of our strategy was always that 
uh, you know, we wanted to be where our customers are and we wanted to be where our local supply partners are. So the moment that we got more traction in a destination, and this could even be more, most recently Japan or Cape Town or, you know, interesting, you know, long distance, long haul uh, destinations, we would actually go there and we would open offices and we would have local um, sales and sales ops um, in order to improve the customer experience. I think was intelligent was that at the very beginning, we actually um, hired people that we brought to Berlin, so the headquarters, and trained them before we actually sent them into their native destinations. Or we would actually take our top performers and the sales and marketing teams and actually, uh, you know, then send them off into the destinations to, to build the teams there. So the seeding was always done after, you know, strong uh, cultural and, 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 and skill boot camps that we had at the headquarter over a long uh, period of time. And this way we had very, very few failures, if any. I can't even remember one failure. And looking back, it's uh, one of the things that I'm the most proud of is that our employee satisfaction scores in our global offices are insanely high and we've never saved money on them either. So I think that's the other thing, you know, very often, uh, you know, you only care about the things that you see. So uh, as a CEO, you know, when you get the budget, it's like obviously your own office should be nice and, you know, it's like you want to have your Christmas party and all of that. And we always made sure that we actually spend less money per employee, you know, headquarters and so like for overseas and, you know, those guys get the nicest WeWorks and those guys you know, get got flown in for the Christmas party, and like you know, we we spent like you know equipment for a video conferencing, for instance, for them. You know, those are all like the slight, uh, small things that uh, actually make a big difference for them, and you know, include them into your ceremonies, right, into your global all hands meetings. You know, make sure that you know they get recordings of that. You know, if if they can't participate because of time zone differences and that type of stuff, that made a big difference for us. And you know, I think we've we've done really well. That's like one of the key strengths of Get Your Guide that we've been able to scale globally, uh, you know, and not, not only in an efficient and, and you know, business friendly and successful way, but actually also from a cultural point of view. Okay. So, and before we've, we've already talked about like the, the challenges to, that come with high growth and you said that over time, your unit economics always became stronger, but I assume that if you start in a local market, it basically scales up over time as well. Right? So what did you do in order to get to this level of data informed decision-making that you, that you apply? Um, have you always spent a lot of uh, effort and, 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 and time on getting a good BI in place or like what are the things that you did in order to, to get to these data information? I think from the time when we had like 20 or 25 engineers, we already started to hire uh, uh, data engineers, uh, BI engineers and also data analysts. And again, we all came from scientific backgrounds, right? So it was a little bit in our DNA also to look at data uh, from a relatively early uh, early age on, you know, in the beginning, we just pulled it basically from the server logs and then later, so like, you know, we would build a uh, data warehouse, which at, I at the time didn't even know what that was really. But, um, you know, we were relatively early at Get Your Guide and that's another a strategic choice of ours. Um, everyone has access to data, right? You know, whether you're the first year uh, customer service agent or whether you're the you know 10 year uh, senior product manager everyone has access to the same data which by the way our investors think is completely crazy because like you know we basically make ourselves so vulnerable to um, uh, to data breaches uh, but at the end of the day we believe that you know our employees are very trustworthy and it's better to have them data informed and come up with like really good ideas and and good decisions uh, than to kind of like block everyone off like most founders like often think that you know particularly when it comes to growth they have to have all of the ideas, right? So like you have to like go out to like startup events or like, you know, meet with other growth hackers or marketeers and they will tell you all of the secret hacks and, and tricks of, of, of like how to grow. Chances are that the people in your company have much better ideas than people working for another company because they actually do see the customer every single day. They see the pain points every single day. They are relatively informed, but most of the time they aren't asked. Uh, and hence, they never give their opinions. So I actually found one of the best growth hacks is actually just walk through the company and talk to a random amount of people and just ask them, hey, how should we grow? You know, what's a good idea? You know, what is something that we, sh we should be testing today? And like, you know, trust me, we've had some of our best ideas for those type of sessions. What are the three most successful growth initiatives that get your guide? First, like massively uh, successful growth in initiative that we had, like the first growth hack was actually that we opened our platform uh, to suppliers uh, back in 2010. Back then, believe it or not, 
No one had ever built a supplier backend where uh, travel experience suppliers, sightseeing tours providers, etc., could list their products online. And like the dogma back then was that you know they didn't want to do that; it was too cumbersome, etc. So we opened that up, and, and with literally like ten interns, and and so like myself, like we onboarded half of Europe, you know, in terms of the supply base, and thereby created a lot of content on the website. We started to translate that into a lot of different uh, languages, and. So Simply by the availability and the native language content uh, in you know travel experiences, we reached like a consumer audience of millions through search engines, referral links that suddenly popped in because people could link to these type of products. Suppliers direct would refer to these products to be booked. So a growth hack was literally not even on the consumer side, but was literally opening up the platform to suppliers and scaling that massively. Uh, later, another growth hack. Now this will sound completely stupid, but was we were a very 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 early mover to uh, build a mobile responsive website and you know at the time uh, this is like 2013 or 14 none of the supply based um, you know was actually mobile optimized everyone was looking staring at a desktop screen uh, in their offices and we realized hey it's mobile and we ba back then made a very very counterintuitive move and a lot of the growth moves are very counterintuitive by, by, by the way everyone was talking about apps like the you know iPhone had launched the app store was out but we were like no like it's very hard to get a lot of people to download travel apps because you don't use them on a daily uh, on a daily basis so let's go with the mobile web first. Again, by the way, against the explicit advice of, of our board, you know, who clearly wanted us to build mobile apps. And we said, no, we don't take our resources there. We actually build a very good, smooth, mobile optimized uh, website. And we will start to A-B test with our consumers to make sure that that's really frictionless. Because we were the first mobile optimized website in the world for travel experience. So, this, you know, with the boom of the mobile device and more Wi-Fi hotspots in the destination and like the roaming charge. Uh, you know, coming down, we again sort of like you know propelled in, in growth uh, very heavily, uh, and then um, you know the final growth hack that you know we've done um, you know more recently is actually to um, go out to a lot of uh, third parties, so um, you know travel publishers, um, you know you know web other websites, you know other travel providers, actually go out very proactively and start to do deals with them and just say, hey, here's our content, you know, go and sort of like you know sell it and and start to build incentive schemes around that travel agents was one segment we did that with a lot more segments we also found that you know to be working incredibly well and scaling super fast so you know that that was another one that actually worked really well johannes um we are coming to an end um thank you very much for taking the time tonight i would like to stress what i said at the beginning that constantly you're 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 giving back to the ecosystem and you're fighting for a better startup world and i think that's something where many people can 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 basically learn a ton from so this episode again will be made available um i said this at the beginning on youtube spotify and all the uh well-known channels i'm looking forward to see you guys again thank you very much for coming here tonight and uh, have a nice evening